Werewolf by Night. The new Disney Plus special presentation is streamable right now and just in time for Halloween. I had a chance to watch it on Friday, but before I give my thoughts, I'm first going to go into a little backstory on my relationship with Werewolf by Night. Because let me tell you, the 1970s, it was a magical time to be a kid. And a decade which brought such classics in popular culture as Jaws, Star Wars, The Exorcist, The Godfather films, Alien, Halloween, and of the Dragon, Christopher Reeve as Superman, and so much more. Well anyway, my grandmother, like many other aunts, uncles, and grandparents I'm sure, kept a collection of comic books around her house spe specifically for us grandkids to read when we stayed over. Among the Archies, the Scrooge McDucks, Batmans, and Spider-Mans, there was a few early Marvel horror comics, and a handful of those were Werewolf by Night. At that time, Werewolf by Night was penciled mostly by the incomparable Mike Plug, and written by Jerry Conway, and as a young impressionable lad, I was captivated. For a second, I'm going to take a quick aside and talk about Mike Plug. This guy is responsible for so much of the look of many fantastic images and films throughout the 70s and 80s. It is criminal his name is not more recognizable today. Seriously, Google this guy. He is am amazing. That's Mike Plug, P-L-O-O-G. Okay, back to it. While Spider-Man was my favorite superhero, Werewolf by Night was my favorite comic book. Sure, I was familiar with classic Universal horror monsters, the Wolfman being no exception, of course. But Werewolf by Night made this struggle much more real. Jack Russell struggled with protecting his small fam family from those looking to control him, and he struggled with a tenuous control over himself while trying not to out and out kill anyone when his cursed transformations took hold of him three nights a month. For a young kid already into horror, this story was rich with depth and detail that no 70-minute film could encompass. Don't misunderstand me. I love the 1941 Wolfman and also the 2010 Wolfman with Benicio Del Toro, for that matter, and I still do. Werewolf by Night just gave me more. More werewolf, more struggle, more tragedy, and to add even more depth for poor Jack, he wasn't bitten by a werewolf. It was a legacy he inherited from his father's dabblings into the evil and dark book known as The Darkhold, which was a pre-public domain Necronomicon stand-in. Now, now known by most Marvel moviegoers as that book that Scarlet Witch used to screw up a bunch of stuff to save her, save her made up and imaginary children. So anyway, Jack Russell, he didn't have an accent with a werewolf. Rather, he has to deal with the very blood he was born with to find some balance with a fundamental part of his nature, something all of us have to deal with when growing up. As an adult, I own, have read, and reread every issue, even the not-so-good issues when they tried to bring Werewolf by Night back, more than once, with little or no success. A few movies were hinted at pre-MCU, but nothing ever really materialized. Fast forward to 2022 and somebody at Disney had the idea of creating a Marvel Studios special presentation with the look and feel of the 1970s and 80s television specials, albeit with an updated look. Disney hires composer Michael Giacchino to direct. Wait, what? Yep, you heard me. Michael Giacchino. He's a prolific Hollywood composer creating such soundtracks as Ratatouille, Alias, Star Trek 2009, Lost, John Carter, Jurassic World, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man Homecoming, and so many more. Before this, Michael Giacchino has only directed one short and one episode of Star Trek Short Treks. Clearly, clearly Kevin Feige or whoever saw something in this guy, and when you're already taking risk on a Marvel Comics horror film, it's as good a reason as any to take another. So now that, you had, now that you have more background on this than you probably cared to know, I hope it was interesting. But what did I think of the new Werewolf by Night film? Well, first I'm going to ask a question. How does Disney do horror? Well, that's a mixed bag of an answer to be sure. But with the exception of 1980's Watcher in the Woods, I would argue they haven't ever really done horror. Just horror-themed shows and movies. The first question to answer will be this. Is Werewolf by Night horror? I'm going to answer yes. Though it is light-hearted horror film to be sure, which the intent was to be more fun than uncomfortable, I feel the general tone and mode, the tone and mood, and also not shying away from some rather violent and bloody content, classifies it as horror. The plot revolves around a group of monster hunters attempting to win a powerful monster hunting relic known as the Bloodstone. Not the one from that film series known as Subspecies. This is the Marvel version, and it actually does some things other than drip blood. 
This contest is arranged and emceed by the long dead puppet of one Ulysses Bloodstone, and apparently it's a no hold bars event wherein the competitors are free to kill each other as well as the subject monster of the hunt, in which the Bloodstone is apparently attached to. For an organization that wants to eradicate monsters from our world, it seems odd that they'd be so blasé about losing some of their best mon monster hunters in a contest for a trophy. Alright, enough about that. As the plot does unfold, there are a couple wrinkles that appear. One in the form of Ulysses Bloodstone's estranged daughter, Elsa, and the other in one of the hunters that does not seem to be all he appears. The tone of the film is such that it is paying homage to classic horror films, even being presented mostly in black and white. While this style may have alienated some viewers, I felt it was a nice way to keep in some of the stronger gory elements and blood without the further impact of color, and I'm happy to say it did not shy away from the violent bloodletting. As for any themes of the film, it's not a long film, it's only 52 minutes, and a direct plot, it had a very direct plot that wasn't too deep in any other themes, other than maybe that everybody needs help sometimes. And you know what? I was okay with that. The acting and directing was gleefully over the top when it needed to be, as was the style of this film. And Harriet Sansom Harris excelled at this as the villainous Barusa. The acting and directing also knew when to tone it down for the quieter intimate scenes that occasionally pop up here and there, usually between Elsa and Jack. The film was scored by none other than Michael Giacchino himself and was suitable for a classic style monster movie with a broad sweeping score with highs and lows at the right moments. The film's production design seemed to be timeless, or perhaps several decades before anything in the current MCU, and I feel this was probably intentional. Marvel clearly wanted a film they could put anywhere in their current canon, depending on how it was received by the viewing public. Gives them a little leeway, you know? The editing, effects, and dialogue all fit together to create a tight, cohesive story, and the pace kept along at a good clip, never really letting the viewer get bored. Jack Russell's werewolf looked pretty good, and they definitely stuck with the classic werewolf by night, wolfman type look, rather than the anthropomorphic wolf that has appeared in all the later incarnations of the character. The one surprise monster, more on him later though, seemed an entirely CGI creation, but he still mostly worked, so it was okay. So I broke down the film, but how did I feel about it overall? Well, I'm going to tell you. I enjoyed it, quite a bit actually. I was happy to see a Marvel character I loved, partially realized onto film, and I was left wanting more, and that is always a good sign. The style and tone of the film conveyed the sense of fun, and the surprising bloody finale was the right kind of shocking. So yeah, it was good. So I said one of my favorite Marvel characters was only partially realized. That's because this film feels like it may be just an episode in a long line of Werewolf by Night film serials. On a side note, I would be down for that. However, as Jack Russell's first outing, this was about him as much as it was about Elsa Bloodstone and Jack's relationship with Ted, that surprise monster I mentioned earlier. As for Ted, I want to keep this as spoiler-free as possible, so we're just going to call him Ted. This really didn't feel like the comic version of Ted, and clearly the character, more tragic in the comics, was played up more for cuteness and laughs in this film. A trend that Disney productions... With Disney productions, I personally kind of get tired of, but that being said, in this, it actually kind of works, and it worked pretty well and felt mostly organic. Ultimately, this Disney Plus special presentation served to introduce three characters on the back of Werewolf by Night, and it did so, I feel, successfully. And even though I know all about their comic book counterparts, now I want to know more about them in the MCU, and right now, that's good enough for me. I'm going to give this three and a half out of four stars. If you want a good, fun monster romp, just check it out. It's enjoyable. So now I'm going to open it up to my friends with some good Q&A. And uh, beware of spoilers after that. And uh, here we go. Hey, guys. All right. All right. So so you are the probably the biggest Werewolf by Night fan that I have <laughs> probably known or ever seen. Um, I guess my question is, as someone who is pretty well... Uh, well, you, you're pretty familiar with the comics, right? Would you say that this sort of captured the essence of the comics, or maybe this was just like a Disney-fied sort of um, uh, story that they... I think it's hard to say if it captured the essence of World by Night comics for the simple fact that my last statement, where it's really not so much about Jack, um, mm -hmm. certainly he didn't have a lot of dealings 
with man thing um spoilers by the way uh with ted um he certainly didn't deal with elsa bloodstone i think his name is ted yeah his real name was ted in the in the comic too that's who he Wait, was whoa. that's who he was before he became man thing it was like okay, ted, so he was, ted he was or something yeah he was human once um huh. so i mean it you know i mean i think the guy i it, what is his name i forgot his name the actor i you know, I think. Gael? What's that? At the Gael, Gael Garcia Bernal. That's it. Yeah. Oh. Um, you know, I think he's definitely an older Jack. Jack was like nineteen in the comic, um, but I mean, Jack was an empathetic guy. He really didn't want to hurt anybody. He hated the curse. Um, probably the only guy he ever really actively went after <laughs> was the guy that murdered his mom, which would make sense, right? That was one of the earliest issues. Um, uh, but you know I mean he, as far as a character yeah I mean Jack was empathetic he always tried to help people things like that so in that in those terms for what little we got to see of actually Jack yeah he, he's pretty much an older Jack hmm. well I mean if I could just say something real quick yeah. right um, first off first off um, there's if I remember in the comics there's mm -hmm. th there's either two or three different characters right there's two or three different uh, protagonists right i mean in the from, comic? The, from the beginning of the comic towards the end right wasn't there like or was well there's was this... jack like native well, i remember one of them was native american right or was jack native american no 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 oh, no okay I, i'm probably you, thinking of something you, else. I, never been... I think you're thinking of the newer run the new four issue limited mm, series right so that's what i was wondering if uh... is he playing that that character the maybe my understanding is it is part of the newer stuff that they did even though honestly it was a four issue i think four issues it was not i mean the concept mm. was okay it just wasn't written very well <laughs> um okay. so i think they are trying to go more with that yeah mm. i mean you 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 know you're saying that he was definitely like very empathetic you know what i mean he didn't want to hurt anybody right. he obviously hated the curse um I think I got a lot of that from when I watched it. Right, yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of that is because of, of Guy Garcia Bernal. Yeah. I think he has a very, like, he's very expressive. Yeah. I think yeah. just the, the look of, like, constant concern and worry on his face always seemed to convey, like, a very sort of sad life. Yeah. You know, yeah. only ever really picked up when he's actually interacting with Ted. Um, <laughs> so, like, I picked oh, up on a lot Elsa. of that just by watching it. Yeah, even with Elsa. Yeah. Right. Um, so I, I, that, that's kind of what I wanted to know, like how accurate was this portrayal of, of Jack, uh, it seemed like uh, an older from the Jack. comic in the movie, but right. But still kind of about the same, right. Just kind yeah. of like a Lon Chaney Jr. Like tortured soul kind of yeah. deal. Right. With like the, the yes, Talbot really character, right. Yeah. I mean, late, late yeah. in the, late in the original seventies run, he did, he did actually gain control of the werewolf and can change at will. But yeah, early on, it was definitely a curse he was dealing with. So yeah. Yeah, no, it, it seemed like an older Jack that had never really found a way to master the curse. Mm. Yeah. One, of, one of the things I was the most concerned about, and I think I told you this last week yeah, yeah. Uh, after we had gone off the air, it's like the biggest heartbreak for me is if you hate this movie. <laughs> because this is like, this is your absolute favorite comic getting adapted like i know what it's yeah. like to have something that you like get adapted and then you're like heartbroken because it sucks real bad <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, ho the hobbit oh, man. Um, the hobbit oh but, my god yeah right so that's for a whole nother show yeah. but <laughs> yes, I, 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 I guess i just was um like, what about like the look what did the look do it for you like is that what was it comet accurate because it looked comic accurate to me i do like the the sort of um, Wolfman from like the oh, Universal horror like movie. Like you're talking about his character design. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, the design of like him in werewolf form. Yeah, no, it. You know, it's hard to. It's hard to say he looked like Mike Plug's werewolf, <laughs> um, right. but he, but he did look more like a Wolfman, which was Mike Plug's basic design. So I can definitely appreciate that. Yeah. Um, no, it looked cool. I liked it. I liked that they kind of kept his face mostly hairless, because honestly, even in the comic book. Even though his skin's all brown, his face doesn't necessarily look furry. At least not in every not in every image. But no, he looked cool. I thought it looked good. 
Okay. Really good and i love that he you know and that was one thing i didn't say in the review his fighting style was right out of the early comics he used to jump on dudes backs and just tear into them and i thought that was really cool yeah, that, to was see. Pretty, that was pretty cool yeah. i was honestly surprised to see that like there yeah. the, the level of violence in this and i know it was curved <laughs> because of it was, it was in black and white right but the level of violence in this for a disney special was pretty striking insane. yeah it was pretty striking yeah, yeah. yes especially the, when you consider blood that blood flying across <laughs> Yeah, especially when you consider that PG-13 has, like, drastically changed over time. And then you see this, like, oh, my God, you get to see someone get their arm cut off. Yeah. You get to see someone get stabbed in the neck with an arrow. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> someone get a sword, a sword it, like, jammed into their head. I'm like, whoa. It was, it was shocking but, in the right kind of ways. Yeah. One of the other things I was also concerned, mostly for you, about <laughs> was the presentation, right? Like, the whole, like, the, the beginning of it, right? Like, the, the, the like, kind of like the Marvel title card. Yeah. Uh, was like done in like a very sort of 70s like movie right. kind of special presentation and yeah. like right and then you get into the actual movie and it's more like one like an old 30s. universal monster yeah, movie like with a black movie. and white like how how did that how did that affect the movie for you did it affect it at all or uh you know i think it is i think it very much kind of puts it out there like you're you're in for an homage although i would argue that the movie itself really kind of emulated more of to me it emulated more of a hammer style but like fast, <laughs> but faster you know what i mean where it was like the title card was definitely the 40s the opening shots were definitely the 40s but once it got going it almost like the mood and tone and kind of the weirdness felt more pacing. like a hammer movie but then the pacing of course was much more modern and much faster yeah so yeah no, right, I, was, right. I, I was digging it I loved how it looked honestly like there were some parts of the movie that i was watching that oh, really man. made it look like a like a like a 40s black and or a 30s black and white movie you know yeah, yeah. and of course you know you get to stuff like shots of ted or something and like oh okay i'm right back because obviously he he looks very cgi even in black and white right yeah. he doesn't yeah, look terrible I, but he I'm but like, you can definitely tell he looks cgi yeah i was fascinated by the fact that there was hardly any glossy they, there must be green screens here and there but like that there's an actual set that they're filming on, not just a big green screen room like in a lot of other Marvel productions. Like, yeah. like you see a big like shot of the of the castle, and you're like, and you see like the roof, and you go, whoa, and you see all the monster heads in the wall, and then all of a sudden there's a big shot of the maze. So oh, yeah, good. That was pretty cool. The shot of the maze was pretty cool. It, it's amazing what practical effects just how it just beats like computer animation yeah, like well, sometimes it's kind of clean out of the water you know what a lot of people don't realize is ridley scott back in what was that 2011 12 with prometheus he actually proved that nowadays you can build like 80 to 90 percent of a practical set for cheaper than doing it all cgi um and, Damn, then, you, and then you can use cgi to sort of fill it in and it's still cheaper overall so i mean i'd like to see studios get back to that a little bit um yeah you know, that's just me because if you like look at the way spider-man far from home was filmed like 90 percent of it is green screen even right. the gun in Sam jackson's hand was a green screen gun right. <laughs> uh, but um speaking of practical effects um i was surprised that a chunk of the shots with man thing was a practical effect was it? like an actual an actual suit was built they just like See, the I didn't CG know that. They did CG for his face, but, like, th there was an actual, I don't know if it was a suit or a puppet, but it was huge, and it, it just looked great. <laughs> wow, see, I didn't know that. I would have assumed it was all CGI. I mean, I knew there was a guy doing mocap, but I didn't really research, and I assumed it was just all CGI because so much of it is nowadays, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and main thing, or Ted, mm -hmm. Ted was a little too, a little too intellectually active. Um Ooh. man huh. thing man thing is not he's kind of like a it's hard to explain he's semi well semi sapient um mm -hmm. he doesn't really respond or react too much to stimuli unless it directly affects him and he actually responded to back in the 70s he would respond to emotion like if he felt strong emotion he would react if he felt hmm. if he felt anger if he was feeling somebody else's anger he would react in anger um, but I mean, I, you know, that's, but, that's kind of a hard thing to translate. So, I mean, I get it. <laughs> it's easier uh, to I do was just going to say, like, I, like, I didn't, I didn't really catch any of that, like in the movie, like yeah, no. now that you say that, you know what I mean? Like the whole idea where he's like, listen, you just got to talk to him. Like he's an old friend. Like, yeah, 
that makes sense that now. That makes sense, right, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, well, like, it wasn't anything that you could tell was, like, conveyed at any other point no. in time. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Yeah. And if the okay. hunters were violent towards him, he would have been violent towards them. So. Okay, right. now, I'm, I'm not too familiar with a lot of the Marvel monster characters, except for Morbius, for obvious reasons, but can Man-Thing really, like, set people on fire by just doing this to them and, like, blowing them up he could do a lot of crazy things um i don't i don't i mean okay i thought dude, he was just gonna maul someone to death but no it just grabs a person and engulfs them in flames i'm like whoa whoa I mean, what, what the to, hell to be fair i can't say i was the biggest man thing fan so he may have um that's not to say i'm not interested in finding out but i can't say i've read a lot of man thing i just remember him he did have a lot of funky powers he could do um i know he was virtually indestructible because literally like wolverine could cut him to shreds and he would literally just reform i mean he was just you know he's made out of swamp bits he was made out of swamp bits yeah the human in him is virtually gone uh, wait only... did he pre swamp thing or was swamp thing before man thing uh swamp thing was actually first i believe man thing i don't think oh. came along till the 70s um but man thing and i wonder how they're going to work this into because I, it has to be a very conscious choice that they picked man thing and the reason why is and this is the part most people don't real about realize about man thing is he is the guardian of the nexus of multiple realities what so the? there's a place in florida apparently in the marvel universe where all these realities come together that's how howard would be Florida. that's how howard the duck ended of all up. places yeah that's how howard the duck ended up in our universe right. so i don't oh. know i don't know if they're gonna somehow work that into what happened in dr strange i don't know i i don't know so maybe we'll get a howard the duck movie out of this <laughs> well we already got one i wouldn't yeah. mind that yeah well a good howard the duck movie i don't know a if good howard well i don't know well, if uh, 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 a, yeah, a good Howard the Duck movie, not just an entertaining Howard the Duck movie. Right, yeah, that movie is entertaining. It's just not Howard the Duck. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. I don't know if Disney would be up for doing Howard the Duck. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, it'd have to make some matter? sort of like satirical that's statement. A very, yeah. yeah, that's a very sharp satirical comic. Um, but anyway, yeah, so anything else with okay. uh Well, as far okay. as... Uh, Elsa, admittedly, I, I know almost nothing about. She is a much more recent character. Now, do you think the runtime was appropriate for this, or do you think it could have been longer? Well, you know, it left me wanting more, so I wish it would have been longer. But I think, I think, you know, I think Disney. I mean, when you look, I mean, it's a big risk for them, and I don't mean financially, of course not. The thing was probably cheap as hell to shoot because it's all one set or two sets you know what i mean <laughs> yeah but um yeah. and it's a limited number of actors but I, it's a risk for them as far as what it means for the mcu um so in those terms i think they wanted to keep it lean i would argue that they wanted to keep it lean they wanted to keep it tight um they wanted to keep it short um you know in all those regards i think it succeeded because it did leave me wanting more it, it ended quick i i wish it would have went on but like i said like i said it felt like to me it felt like if we're out by night was a series of movie serials like 15 movie serials this would have been like episode six or seven <laughs> and that's where i was like eh, it didn't get very much werewolf by night but that's okay all right let's, uh let's talk performance you mentioned uh, uh the character of verusa who's yeah. the stepmother of uh played by Harriet uh, Samson Harris, yeah. who I thought was fantastic. Over the top. Just chewing scenery. I, I, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, that, I was just <laughs> going to I was just gonna say that. Like, I feel like she knew what this was oh, supposed yeah. to be, yeah, yeah. so she really hammed it up. Oh, yeah. And I would say, like, definitely, like, top performer in this whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, she needed but to be. I She's think the I want, one that but, needed to be, yeah. Right. But I guess what I... I asking you as, like, a, a fan of Werewolf by Night, like, how did you... How much did you like Gael Garcia uh, Bernal I, as, as Jack Russell? I did like it, actually. Um, you hit the nail on the head. He had, like, such a great combination of, like, worry and concern, but yet he could be charming mm. when he wanted to, you know what I mean? And, and like, the whole scene, I think his strongest moment his, in that, for me, was his whole scene with Elsa in the cage when he started uh. sniffing her, and she's like, what the hell's going on? And he's like, you just look me in the eye and just you know this works sometimes and when he was trying to help her out because something bad is yeah. about to happen and <laughs> you know that was really cool yeah, he 
you could have very easily the character anyway could have very easily given up so there was like this like light of hope and like i said i think i think kyle's really good with his emotions yeah. i think he's really good at like emoting in his face and like really sort yeah. of driving that point of home like you always know how he's feeling in like the whole show so yeah. i really i really like that i think he's really good at that yeah yeah oh yeah yeah uh, I also like the transformation scene. Like, sure, you don't get to, like, directly see um, his, like, body, like, shift and change. But, like, seeing the silhouette of it and the flashing lights and you see yeah, her reaction cool. in the cage, that was so awesome. So, oh. I was like... It, yeah, very I think that's definitely, too. like... Yeah, that's definitely, like, ho old Hollywood homage, right? Like, they couldn't create someone's body changing. So, like, let's do it in a shadow or let's, or in a silhouette. You know what I mean? There's like a mystery there. You know something terrible is happening, but right. you can't really see it. It makes it even like more, I don't know, it just ad adds so much more to the scene than if we had just seen him like body horror transform into a werewolf. Right. Right, yeah. No, that was good. I liked that too. I liked it a lot. Yeah. And then, of course, when he just goes off and just starts doing what, doing what poor Wolverine still hasn't hardly ever got to do in any movie. <laughs> just start going off just go, on guys. Just go nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just go yeah. off on guys. Yeah, poor, poor, I really poor. honestly hope to see more specials like these. Yeah. You know, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I don't I'd mind love if they're it to be Werewolf by Night for sure. The, I wouldn't mind if they're like these specials an hour as long as the pacing and story is consistent enough to justify that runtime. Then yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, I mean... And more specials of obscure characters yeah i mean if i were to nitpick i mean i would say this story was a little too lean but you know again for what they were trying to do it's fine you know that's fine all right all right anything else okay. no let's rate this sucker all right well, i already gave it three and a half out of four so what do you guys ah, dang think? it so so me hold on before we go any further tony and i made a bet uh <laughs> off camera uh, be again, I we I was more concerned. This is your baby, right? We were like, let's see, let's let's see which one of us is right. So we guessed what your possible rating would be, oh. and I think Tony, I think I, Tony either nailed it or was closest. Yeah, I uh, know you I were closer. You said, what? I said I said two and a half. I think you said three, didn't you? I said two point five. <laughs> you guys you said two and a half. Two okay. Yeah. Wow. And I gave it a whole score. Yeah, I said I said. You said two. I was playing it safe. I didn't know how you were gonna feel about it. No, I liked it. Especially a lot. being like, like something that you that you really like a lot. Oh, that's great. I'm glad that you did, honestly. Um, as far as a rating for me, four out of four. Um, uh, I would also give it uh, I would also give it four or I'm sorry, uh, three and a half. Nice. Um I feel like there was a lot of it that was done very well. I felt there was a lot of parts of it where like Maybe there could have been a little bit more, like um, Elsa's character, for example. Like I knew of her, but I don't know anything about her. Yeah. And this this uh, this particular special didn't help with that either. <laughs> it's right. but, you know, I thought, yeah. I thought, I thought uh, <laughs> but I thought the the actress who played her was uh, I thought she did really uh, Laura Donnelly. Yeah, That's her name. Yeah, I thought she did really well. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, like I said, everybody oh, who was in it was pretty great. That's, my girlfriend told me that one. I didn't know either. She goes, oh, that's what's her name from Outlander. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, uh, I was going to make fun of you after. I was like, oh, watching Outlander, are we? Um, I, I, Yeah, honestly, I, I love the black and white presentation, the, the old Universal Monsters presentation. Yeah. Uh, everyone's performance was great, especially uh, Harriet, Harriet Sanson Harris was great. Yeah, yeah I, great. I, three and a half, or three and a half is what I would give it. Yeah, I'm giving it a three and a half too because it's probably yeah. my second come out of phase four of the MCU, which isn't really saying much. Like, just the fact that it uses a lot of practical effects and it defies PG 13 levels of violence. And yeah, just, I was shockingly wow. violent. <laughs> yeah, and the fact that it managed to do a somewhat cohesive story within an hour. Well, I don't want to say somewhat cohesive. It's actually. It actually for what it is, it's, it's tight. It's, yeah, it's tight. Yeah, it takes advantage of its runtime. Yeah, because of that, I would have to give it a three point five. Yeah, it's like my favorite phase four. And it seemed like it was, and it seemed like it was a sequel to one thing and a prequel to another, like a like a serial. That's what it reminded me of, like a movie right. serial. So yeah, like episode seven, the Bloodstone, or something like that. You know what I mean? Or the Return would have been cool. Yeah, would have been yeah. cool. So yeah. yeah, it was very cool. Very cool. All right, guys, cool. Well, we all enjoyed it, apparently. And hopefully yep. we'll get to see more of these. Yep. Yeah, that would be great. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, let us know what you think. Uh, leave a comment uh, below. Um, hit like and subscribe on these videos. Uh, you can, uh, if you hit subscribe, you'll get them as they come out. So you can always find out what we're all thinking, even though we hate everything almost. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, Wait till you get to my next video that I'm um, working on. Ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, one last um, thought. One last thought while I'm thinking about it about this Werewolf by Night is, you know, there's a reality of the business. If they were going to actually do a Werewolf by Night series, it would it would be actually much more like the Incredible Hulk series from the late seventies, early eighties. That is very much like <laughs> the Werewolf by Night comic, the last, except, that, last time. except it was weaved more into the occult and stuff. But uh, right. so I mean, there's a reality to the business. They want to work them into bigger stuff. I'm okay with that. Okay, sorry. Final thoughts over. That's good. That's fine. I mean, honestly, I would love to see like something more with like these monsters maybe away from like the the main mcu stuff and just kind of yeah. like an off to the side maybe some of the magical characters show up you know probably get like a yeah. doctor strange cameo or something yeah that'd be cool yeah, yeah. all right cool let's get out of here you guys yep. anything else all right, let's go, guys. All right. Nope, that's it all right thanks guys and good night all right guys